Hello, I'm JW. Uh, today we're going to have a look at bathroom zones, and in other words, uh, what you can put in various parts of the bathroom, and of course what you're not allowed to. And this is something which has changed a fair bit over the years. And uh, for this particular video, we're looking at uh, the 17th edition. This is actually Amendment 3. But, uh, all the uh, amendments are actually the same in regards to the bathroom. And of course, this may well change in the future. So if you're watching this video years in the future, bearing in mind this, of course, might be out of date. But certainly in 2015, this is the uh, current state of affairs. So uh, let's have a look and see what the definitions actually say. Now, the section in question is 701. And as it says here, locations containing a bath or shower. And it's important to note that that's all it actually covers. Anywhere that doesn't have a bath or shower in it is not a bathroom under these uh, definitions. And therefore, this section does not apply. And as it says here, it applies to electrical installations in locations containing a fixed bath, as in bathtub or birthing pool, or a shower, or in fact, obviously both of those things. So this is not going to apply to somewhere with a toilet and a hand basin. It doesn't apply to the kitchen, and it doesn't apply to anywhere else. And it doesn't apply to swimming pools and the like either, because they have their own separate section further on. So it's purely places with a bath or shower in there. Otherwise, of course, does not apply. Now, there's several uh, zones that have been defined here. And we've got zone 0, uh, zone 1, and zone 2. Now, there was previously a zone 3, but that's been deleted, so that's no longer applicable. Although, of course, uh, information is still out there regarding it. But anything that refers to zone 3 is now out of date. Therefore, it should not be used. And there are descriptions of the zones here, and they're a bit wordy in their way, but of course, uh, that's mainly because I have to describe it accurately. But essentially, zone 0 is the interior of the bathtub or the shower basin, so the part where the water goes. And for showers, they don't actually have a tray or basin. Then it's basically uh, 0.1 metres or 10 centimetres above the base surface or the floor. Now, zone 1 is normally 2.25 metres above the bath or the shower, but uh, in the event of there being a uh, fixed shower head or water outlet higher than that, then it's uh, the height of whatever that is. But uh, generally, you don't get uh, shower outlets higher than 2.25 metres. So in most cases, it's uh, simply 2.25 metres above finished floor level in the area above the bath or the shower. And uh, zone 2... Again, there's the uh, long description here, but essentially it's any distance that's, uh, again, the 2.25 metres above the finished floor, and 0.6 metres from the border of zone 1, which essentially means from the edge of the bath or the shower. So 60 centimetres, or it's about 2 feet. And uh, I know here, if the shower doesn't have a basin, or in other words, a tray, there is no zone 2, but uh, zone 1 is actually increased to 1.2 metres, and there's some uh, figures which we'll have a look at in a moment. Now, while those descriptions are perfectly accurate, they're a bit uh, wordy and uh, not very helpful. So uh, there's actually some diagrams here. And uh, as we can see, we've got a bath here. And zone O, or zero, is actually the zone within the bath, so where the water would actually go. So it's that entire space. And see here, zone 1 is the area above that to a height of 2.25 metres. Or in the event of a shower head, it would be the height of the shower head if that was more than 225. And then zone 2 essentially the same height as that, but uh, 0.6 metres from the edge of the bath or the shower, or in other words, the edge of zone 1 there. And if I have a look at the shower equivalent, again, it's very much the same. Zone O or 0 is within the actual shower itself. Zone 1 is above, and then zone 2 is the 60 centimetres from the edge of that. And again, the same height applies. And in the case of there not being a shower tray, then zone 0 or O is the uh, 10 centimetre high, or 0.1 metres, and the rest of it, of course, is the same. Now, looking at those from above, as in a sort of a plan view, again, you've got your uh, bath here, and you see that the uh, 0.6 metres extends uh, all the way around the bath there, so it's any point that's uh, within 60 centimetres of the edge of the bath. And again, zone 1 covers that entire area over the bath, and zone 0 is within the bath itself. And we've got various variations, so we've got a fixed partition there. For example, it's a 60 centimetre radius from the edge of the partition. And again, with the showers and things like that, again, it's a very similar thing. 60 centimetres from that, or the 60 centimetre radius from the fixed partition. And then the only exception here is a shower that doesn't have a basin or a tray, it's just basically a flat floor and then it's simply 1.2 metres from the fixed water outlet. And notice that's the uh, water outlet, that's not the drain hole in the floor, it's actually where the uh, shower head is fixed or 
water comes out of. And again, the same thing applies if you've got a fixed partition, which is going to be fairly common in that sort of situation. It's the same uh, situation if you've got a uh, distance from the actual fixed water outlet of 1.2. And then you've got this uh, radius here, which uh, is determined by the thickness of the partition and the distance from the other side. So it still equates to 1.2 metres from that fixed water outlet. Now in terms of what you can actually install in each of those three zones, that's 0, 1 and 2, uh, these uh, regulations on this page are applicable. And uh, the first one here is the uh, external influences. So installed electrical equipment shall have at least the following degrees of protection. So in zone 0, IPX7, and in zones 1 and 2, it's IPX4. And uh, we'll have a look at those uh, later on to see what those actually refer to. And then there's two further sections here which uh, actually describe things that you may and may not install there. So in zone 0, switchgear and accessories shall not be installed. And that's pretty obvious because being one of the zone 0 is actually in the bath itself, so those things would like this to be underwater for a fair amount of the time. So pretty obviously you don't want uh, anything installed there. So any kind of switches or uh, stocket outlets or anything like that, of course, not permitted. Really common sense. Now in zone 1, so that's the area sort of above at the uh, bath or shower, so you can have switches, but they have to be from uh, self circuits, which is essentially a separated extra low voltage. And that's a maximum of 12 volts AC or 30 volts uh, DC. And the source of that has to be installed outside of all of the zones. And in zone 2, switch gear and accessories incorporating switches or socket outlets shall not be installed with the exception of switches and socket outlets of self circuits, as we saw previously there. And again, the source of that being outside the zones and shaver supply units, complying with the relevant standard there. And there's a further note here, apart from those, as uh, I mentioned, uh, socket outlets and the shaver units, uh, normal socket outlets are prohibited within a distance of three metres horizontally from the boundary of zone one. Now in real terms this means that in most bathrooms socket outlets are not permitted, simply because most bathrooms of course are not actually that large. Uh, but of course if you had a bathroom that was bigger than three metres, from the edge of the bath or shower, then you can actually install uh, just normal socket outlets if you wanted to. And then the final section here is current using equipment. In zone zero, current using equipment shall only be installed providing all of these conditions are met. And bearing on this is actually in the bath itself, so again, we're going to be underwater most of the time. So the equipment complies with the relevant standard and is suitable for use in that zone according to the manufacturer's instructions. The equipment is fixed and permanently connected. And the equipment is protected by uh, separated extra low voltage, and again it's that 12 volts uh, AC or 30 volts DC, with the source being outside 0, 1 and 2. So that's extremely limiting, and essentially the only things you're going to get there are certain types of lighting, sort of little LED type things or whatever, again powered from say an isolating transformer located elsewhere. But uh, fairly unlikely scenarios, but some of those sort of whirlpool baths have those types of lights built in. And zone 1, so the area above the bath, you can install these items provided they're suitable according to the manufacturer's instructions. So things like whirlpool units, electric showers, shower pumps, which again would normally be uh, incorporated in an electric shower. Same equipment again by the uh, 25 volts uh, AC this time, or 60 volts, so it's basically double the rating of the zone zero. And again, the source is outside of the zones. Ventilation equipment, so that's your extractor fans and things. Towel rails, water heaters, and luminaires or light fittings. So although this is actually directly above the bath or shower and it's obviously going to get wet, there's quite a lot of things you can install there, provided of course that the uh, thing is suitable according to the manufacturer's instructions. And certain things like extractor fans can certainly go in there, and although you can get sort of 12 volt uh, extractor fans, there's no requirement to use those there. A the, uh, mains voltage one is perfectly fine. And other than that, of course, outside of the zones, you can pretty much do whatever you like. There's no specific restriction once you're outside of the zone 0, 1 and 2. Now in terms of light switches, uh, which is one thing that's changed quite a lot, you can't put them in zone 0, of course, and you certainly can't put them in zone 1, and you can't actually put them in zone 2 either. However, you can put normal light switches outside of zone 2. So in reality, of course, this is the fact that as long as you're more than 60 centimetres from the edge of the bath or shower, you can fit a normal wall-mounted light switch in the bathroom, no problem with that at all, and uh, there's absolutely no reason to have those manky pull cords which are absolutely disgustingly dirty and unhygienic at the end. 
Now, previous editions of the regulations did not permit switches there, which is why uh, pull cords were used extensively. And if you go back far enough, uh, pull cords weren't required, and you could actually put light switches in there anyway. So they say these things change quite often, but certainly uh, for this particular edition, light switches in the bathroom are totally allowed. And uh, unless your bathroom is ridiculously small, you're going to be easily able to get one at uh, more than 60 centimetres from the edge of the bath. So in terms of the actual zones, it's really very straightforward. It's zone 0 is in the bath, zone 1 is above the bath up to the 2.25 metres, and zone 2 is 60 centimetres from the edge of the bath, and anything else is not within the zone, so of course does not apply. And the only other thing to note is that socket outlets can't be installed within 3 metres of the edge of the bath, so in most bathrooms of course that's not going to be allowed because the room isn't that big. However, if you look on the internet and uh, plenty of other places, there's lots of images and diagrams that people have made showing the bathroom zones, and unfortunately a substantial number of them are incorrect for various reasons. Now, of course, there was a Zone 3 once, so you'll still find diagrams with Zone 3 shown. That's simply the fact that they're out of date and uh, whoever drew them haven't actually updated them. But uh, you'll also find, in many cases, a mysterious extension to Zone 2. And uh, here's an example of some images here. And we just pick one at random here. You'll see that, uh, bizarrely, we've got a uh, wash basin there, and a zone 2 covering a 60 centimetre radius from the tap. Now there is no zone 2 there, and there never has been, and uh, quite why there would be is uh, something of a mystery, which we'll be uh, revealing the answer to this later. And this isn't the only variation of this, and that particular diagram just shows a sort of semi-circular area around the tap there, a 60 centimetre radius. However, other diagrams show a 6 cm radius from two taps on the wash basin there, which of course makes the zone considerably larger. And then you get things like this particular diagram, where the zone now is a 6 cm radius from the edge of the wash basin, and seeing that one it extends all the way down to the floor as well. Now all of these things are wrong, and have never been correct, because there's never been any kind of zone around a wash basin, and there's really no need for that anyway. So where did all this mess actually come from? Well, the answer is, it's come from an information sheet from the Lighting Industry Association, who have sent this out to their members. And if you have a look on the page here, you'll see it's got the zones marked there, 0, 1 and 2, and that's all correct and proper. And they've also added in some additional areas shown in orange there, which they've called their uh, IPX4 area. And you see they've extended it above zone 1 there. And also there's that 60 centimetre radius thing around the basin. And essentially what this is, they're recommending to their members, which are generally lighting manufacturers, that uh, certain lights should not be installed in those areas for various reasons. So sort of lamps might explode if water splashed on them and things, and this is all perfectly sensible. But note that they haven't shown it as an extension to the zones, they've just simply said that uh, they're recommending that lights are not installed in that area unless they meet a particular rating standard. So nothing wrong with that, but unfortunately it seems that many lighting manufacturers and plenty of other people have actually taken this information and corrupted it, and basically read it as that that zone 2 has now been extended somehow, and it's now the sort of official zone area. And if you have a look at this other document over here, this is from Ansel, and they've got a diagram here of the various zones there, and they've shown the uh, 6 centimetre radius around the actual tap there on the basin, uh, but they have actually described it correctly, which is unusual, because most of the others have just said it's, this is zone 2, and uh, that's how it is. But as you can see, it says, it is also recommended to have luminaires with a rating of IPX4 around the wash basin, with a 0.6 metre radius of the tap. So uh, it's a recommendation from certain lighting manufacturers. It is not part of the zones, and it never was. So uh, if you're going to show that on these diagrams, they should just be putting a recommendation there not the fact that it's actually a zone as specified in the wiring regulations. Now in terms of those IP ratings, the IPX4 and the IPX7, these, uh, as it says here on Wikipedia, you've got uh, international protection or ingress protection, depending on uh, what you read and uh, who you believe. But uh, the point is that there's two numbers. One that refers to the amount of protection on solid particles, and the other one for liquids. And of course in the case of the bathroom, it's the liquid one which is relevant, so uh, IPX indicates that there's no specific thing about uh, solid particles, and it's the final digit which refers to the amount of protection against liquids. And if you have a look at the uh, table here, you'll see that uh, 4, as in IPX4, it's protected against splashing of water, so that's splashing against the enclosure from any direction, and IPX7 
is uh, suitable for immersion in water up to one metre depth. So, of course, that's something you would actually be allowed to have within the bath itself, as in underwater. So, uh, fairly straightforward. And, of course, there's lots of other numbers in there as well. But the general case is that the larger the number is, then the greater the protection is against the water or the dust or particles going in there. So, look there at bathroom zones, and very straightforward. So, zero in the bath, one above the bath, two is 60 centimetres from the bath. Height wise, 2.25 metres above floor level, not the bath, or higher than that if there happens to be a shower outlet or whatever at a height above that, although that's uh, pretty unlikely. And there's no basin zone, it doesn't exist. It's something that the uh, Lighting Industry Association has suggested to their members for not installing lights there. And there's nothing wrong with doing that, but of course that's not actually a zone two. Unfortunately, plenty of people seem to have taken that advice and corrupted it and uh, made it out as if there is a zone two there. But uh, in terms of BS7671, there's no zone around the basin, and there never was. And the only other thing to remember is the three metres rule for socket outlets. So you can't have any socket outlets within three metres of the edge of the bath or shower. And so in most bathrooms, of course, you can't have any because... Of course, the bathroom's not actually that large in the first place, but uh, if your bathroom is massive, then you can, assuming you actually wanted such things. So, uh, say quite straightforward, but uh, unfortunately a bit of uh, corruption there. And there was a Zone 3 once, which has subsequently been deleted, so uh, anything without it is just a bit out of date. So, until next time, thanks for watching.